Um, hi guys, so we are uh, theory one neutrino group and we are going to give some small brief lecture about the hot and cold CNOs. So this is me Priya Vashni. I'm going to give an introduction and tell about what is CNO and hot, all those things. So what happens inside a star? Um, as we all know, um, inside a star, what happens is um, hydrogen uh, converts into helium. Um, and some few reactions happen inside. So by that uh, reactions, um, the star determines like how, um, like how much it can survive and how many years it can survive and uh, whether it becomes a draw, a wide draft or something like that. So there are two type of cycles inside um, the star which helps to determine the ager, ages. There are two types of reaction cycles which converts hydrogen into helium. There are proton-proton cycle and a CNO cycle. So what is proton-proton cycle? It is nothing but um, reaction which happens inside our sun or uh, um, the cycle which happens inside the star which is are uh, equally massive than our sun or which is less. So the starting temperature should be 4 mil, uh, million uh, Kelvin. And um, next to have is um, CNO cycle. So what is the CNO cycle? This CNO cycle is nothing but the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen cycle. This uh, reaction happens in the star, which is 1.5 times massive than our sun. This uh, star undergoes CNO cycle. The starting temperature of that star should be 15 million Kelvin. So the uh, the star has this reaction where the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen isotopes uh, plays a role as a catalyst. So here the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen are not used fully to um, obtain a hydrogen to helium. This here, the these three things are uh, used as a catalyst for inside this process. So inside the CNO cycle, there are many type of uh, multiple uh, set of reactions. Uh, these all are based on the temperature and abundance of the element. So, but however the net temperatures may be, the net reaction will be the same. The uh, hydrogen will become helium. So here what happens is uh, four protons fuse together and undergoes a process using the uh, nitrogen, oxygen and carbon isotopes as a catalyst and uh, resulting in one alpha particle and two positrons and two electron neutrinos. So here is you can see 12 carbon which is uh, fusing together with one uh, proton giving 13N, um, uh, that is new, uh, uh, nitrogen, plus one gamma particle. This is an uh, um, unstable no, isotope, which undergoes a beta um, uh, decay and gives the carbon and one uh, gamma particle, uh, sorry, one neutrino and one positron. This positron will undergo a, like will capture another one neutron and become and gives out two gamma ray. But here it is not given that uh, that is the process happens here. So this is this carbon will capture another one uh, proton and gives out one nitrogen and one gamma ray. This nitrogen will again uh, capture one proton and gives one oxygen and plus one gamma ray particle. This one will undergo a decay, um, beta plus decay, which is uh, obviously it is not stable. So this um, undergoes the uh, D, uh, beta plus decay and gives nitrogen with positron and a neutrino. This um, nitrogen will capture another one proton and gives one alpha particle that is he helium and gives one carbon. Here, the carbon which we started using this uh, process, starting of the process, is again be uh, obtained by this reaction. This is a closed cyclic reaction. The catalysts are obtained 
uh, at the end so the energy production by cno this energy production that uh, the cno cycle gives some kind of energy that energy is depends on the time scale so the time scale is determined by the de uh, decay rate and the abundance um, of uh, distribution of the element and the reaction so um this energy production is uh, gives that uh, gives two types of cnos well, that is hot and cold cno the cold cno has four type of cycles and the hot cno has three type of cycles so what is cold cno here a uh, cold cno is uh, the nothing but the rate of decay in the process is uh, faster than the uh, rate of uh, proton uh, fusion so the um, when here when you see the uh, new uh, when uh, nitrogen is unstable it goes into a decay a uh, um, beta plus decay and gives carbon instead of capturing one proton and uh, making it into next uh, isotope so here the decay process is faster than the uh, proton fusion so the, this um, cold cno is um, the process is very slow and it always depends on the um, rate of uh, proton capture process this is cno1 where carbon 12 is a uh, captured by one proton and gives n137 plus one gamma particle plus some uh, energy so this is the first cno cycle that they um first um, measured or first uh, they discovered this is called the cn cycle so where uh first carbon is give, uh, again obtained at the last thing a uh, last uh, uh, it's uh, like reaction so where the um, other car carbon nitrogen oxygen as uh, used as a catalyst here and the reaction is already i have explained to you before uh, in the before uh, ppt uh, so carbon plus a proton gives a neutron and the neutron go um, goes as a beta a dk and gives carbon plus positron plus uh, new electron neutrino and gives some energy and this carbon go, uh, captures one proton and uh, gives uh, nitrogen plus gamma and plus energy so these are the energies that they have calculated and the neutrino plus uh, high, um, um, proton is uh, fused together and gives oxygen plus gamma and plus energy this oxygen is where unstable and goes as a uh, b a beta dk process and gives nitrogen and plus one positron and plus uh, new uh, neutrino and gives energy this uh, uh, nitrogen plus positron uh, gives uh, carbon 12 and plus one alpha particle and one uh, and some energies so next is hot cno before going to that uh my fellow mates want to uh, tell you about cno 1 2 3 and 4 after that let me tell you about what is hot cno thank you uh sagar i have to share my screen now hmm. yeah you can share now vishak Okay, thanks. Um, so I'll just explain out this uh, Wikipedia page. Uh, I couldn't make a PPT. Anyway. So as Priyavashini said, uh, the CNO cycle is a is a series of re reactions that end with the uh, end with hydrogen helium being released. So as she mentioned in the CNO one, you have a carbon which is acting as a catalyst. Now in CNA two, the only difference is that a nitro uh, nitrogen will act as a catalyst, uh, and the pro uh, probability of this happening zero point zero four percent of the time. Meaning a lot, uh, most of the time, this cycle, the CNA one cycle itself is followed. Zero point zero four percent of the time, this cycle is followed. So what happens here is very similar to what happens in all the CNA cycles. 
you have nitrogen here that uh, captures a proton it releases a gamma ray and uh, oxygen and similar again it captures a proton to release fluoride and uh, gamma ray now this fluoride uh, fluorine that's there uh, it undergo a beta decay to release to form to release a electron and a electron neutrino and oxygen and now in the next step itself we get a helium here so this oxygen will uh, capture this proton and it will form a helium now the reason we use only three three hydrogens that is one two three is because the atomic number is here, uh, the atomic mass here is fifteen, um, and the the and we have helium that's formed. Over here. The reason these two steps, the last two steps happen, is to get back this nitrogen that that's then starting the reaction. As Priyavashini mentioned, uh, carbon that's then in the first reaction is gotten caught back in the last step of the reaction, and that's why it even though helium is produced here. These two these two steps happen to get back this nitrogen that's there. Um, that uh, now my friend will explain about CnO three. Uh, hi guys, good evening. Uh, CnO three cycle happens only in massive stars. Uh, the reaction starts with uh, oxygen seventeen. Uh, oxygen seventeen. Uh, captures a proton uh, to give fluorine eighteen and uh, gamma ray. Uh, it gives out 5.61 mega electron volts of energy. This uh, fluorine 18 uh, decays into oxygen 18, giving out a positron and electron neutrino. Uh, the half life of uh, fluorine 18 is 109.771 minutes. Oxygen 18 captures a proton uh, to give nitrogen 15 and helium atom giving out uh, 3.98 mega electron volts of energy. Uh, nitrogen 15 further captures a proton to give oxygen 16 and a gamma and a gamma ray is released, uh, giving out 12.13 mega electron volt of energy. Uh, oxygen 16 captures a proton uh, to give fluorine 17 atom and a, ga a gamma ray is released, giving out 0.6 mega electron volts of energy. Uh, fluorine 17 is unstable with a half life of uh, 64.49 seconds uh, and it decays into oxygen, oxygen 17, giving out a positron and a electron neutrino. Uh, Thank you. Um, now I'm going to speak about uh, CNO4. This process, process also occurs in massive stars. Uh, unlike CNO3, where fluorine 19 and gamma are produced, here we acquire nitrogen 15 and alpha, and the chain continue as uh, shown above. So this is a figure I've got through. Uh, so here what happens is oxygen 18, when combined with hydrogen, it forms fluorine 19 plus a gamma and some energy is released. Then the fluorine with ambient hydrogen, it just get collided and uh, forms uh, oxygen and helium with, amount, with some amount of energy. Then we get, uh, we have this oxygen 16. When it combines with hydrogen, we get 17, fluorine 17 and a gamma and some energy. This fluorine 17 with half-life of 64.49 seconds just decays into oxygen 17 plus a positron and a neutron and also some energy is released. This oxygen 17 is then combined with a hydrogen to form fluorine 18, a gamma and 5.61 mega electron volt energy. This fluorine 18 has a half-life of 109.771 one minutes and the uh, then it decays and forms oxygen 18 plus a positron and uh, a neutrino and some energy is released. So this is a process of CNO4. Yeah, so Priya Varshini can start with what CNO cycle. Yeah, so uh, wait, let me show 
Yes. Yeah, so what is hot CNO here? So this is also called a beta limited CNO cycle. Here, the, here it is completely opposite from the cold CNO, where um, rate of proton fusion is faster than the rate of beta decay. So these all happens in the novae and the um, X-ray bursts. So here the process of HCNO is uh, the carbon is uh, again captures one proton and gives nitrogen plus gamma ray plus some um, energy. This uh, neutron, sorry, this nitrogen gains one proton instead of um, like uh, instead of uh, decaying, it gains one hydrogen, sorry, it gains one proton and gives oxygen plus one um, gamma. This oxygen will undergo a decay process and gives nitrogen plus positron plus uh, elect uh, electron neutrino. This uh, uh, nitrogen gains one proton and gives oxygen. This oxygen again undergoes um, decay process and gives ni uh, nitrogen and plus positron plus um, uh, electron neutrino. Uh, the uh, nitrogen gains another one proton and it gives carbon plus alpha particle plus some energy. So what is the difference between this CNO and uh, HCNO as I mentioned before? The um, proton is um, uh, fused with nitrogen in hot CNO, but in cold CNO, the, it undergoes decay process. So this is because of the uh, temperature and the abundance of the uh, element in the stars. So next will be um, HCNO uh, 2 and 3, which will be uh, um, explained by my fellow mates. Thank you. So as previously said, the difference between a cold CNO cycle and a hot CNO cycle is the rate of capture of proton. Now, now in this, in the hot CNO, rate of uh, proton capture is much, much faster than a beta decay process. So uh, the the reactions in CNO1, cold CNO1, cold CNO2, hot CNO1, uh, and everything, the this remains the same. The only difference is the uh, which uh, atom captures the proton. Now, if you look at cold CNO2, we see that the fluor fluorine 17, uh, the oxygen 16 captures the proton. Vishak, uh, your voice is uh, black. Oh, okay. This is, sorry, sorry. Uh, hello, is it better now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, as I said, in cold CNO2, we see that the oxygen atom captures the proton. Now, in hot CNO2, it, it captures the proton and the fluorine atom will also capture the proton here. Whereas in cold CNO2, it undergoes a beta decay process. Now, why this happens, as I said, is because the rate of capture of proton is faster than beta decay process. That's the only difference between the cold cycle and the hot cycle. The rest of the reactions remain the same. So nitrogen captures this proton and with release of gamma ray energy, uh, oxygen is released, oxygen atom is formed. Then that will again capture a proton. Um, then it will form a fluoride ion, the fluorine atom. The fluorine atom will, instead of uh, uh, decaying, it will, form, it will capture a proton here. And this neon atom that is formed, this, this will decay. As you see, as you can see here, the half length is 1.672 seconds. Uh, and then in the next step, the fluorine atom will capture the proton and helium is uh, produced. Now, the reason this last step happens, as I said before, is to get back this nitrogen that is usually starting with the reaction. Uh, now, Chaitanya will explain uh, the third cycle. Uh, the third CNO cycle is yeah, the hot. CNO3 cycle is a bit different uh, compared to the cold one because uh, it starts with fluorine 18 atom and it uh, moves towards a higher mass, uh, mass that's neon, neon uh, 19. Uh, fluorine 18 uh, captures, a, uh, captures a photon to give uh, neon 19 and a gamma ray, releasing 6.41 mega electron volts of energy. Uh, this neon 19 uh, having a half-life of 17.22 seconds, decays into fluorine-19, uh, giving out a positron and an electron neutrino. Uh, fluorine-19 captures a uh, photon uh, and gives oxygen-16 and a uh, helium atom, giving out 8.11 mega electron volts of energy. Uh, oxygen-16 captures a photon and uh, 
gives fluorine 17 and uh, gamma ray uh, releasing 0.6 mega electron volts of energy. Uh, fluorine 17 uh, captures a photon to give neon 18 and a gamma ray. A neon 18 is uh, has a half life of uh, 1.672, uh, which decays into a uh, fluorine 18, giving out a uh, posit uh, positron and an electron neutrino, uh, completing the uh, CNO hot CNO3 cycle. Hello everyone, I'm back again with the summary of our lecture. So in this lesson, we have uh, talked about the CNO cycle and PP cycle, which proton-proton cycle. Uh, in the CNO cycles, we have seen two types of CNO cycles, cold and hot. So cold CNO cycle, have, like it takes place in typical stars where the temperature is uh, about 15, uh, 15 into 10 past six and less than that. And in the hot Sienna cycle, this happens in low waves and X-ray bursts, where the temperature is temperature and pressures are very high. Uh, although we have seen a lot of uh, Sienna cycles, but the end uh, result is the same in all the cases. So here we see a reaction where uh, it summarizes the whole Sienna cycles. What happens in it? Hydrogen get burned, and we get the helium. And with some energy and uh, neutrinos and some gamma. So the neutrinos uh, escape from the star with some energy. These make the neutrinos as our messengers. Uh, we have to note that CNO is self-maintaining chain reaction, which approximately starts at uh, the temperature mentioned, that is 15 into 10 power 6 Kelvin. Its energy output rises very rapidly uh, as temperature increases. Thus, it becomes dominant source of energy at approximately 17 into 10 past 6. So the fun fact is, the sun has a core temperature of around 15.7 into 10 past 6 Kelvin, and only 17.7% 17 17 of the helium for pre nuclei produced in the sun are born through CNO cycle, and the rest is formed through proton-proton cycle. Thank you. Hope you like our lecture. We are open to questions. Yeah, guys, it was very nice. So, theory one members, do you have any questions? Anyone can unmute and ask questions now. Yeah, we say that neutrinos are the most abandoned particles in the universe. So, how can we say that on the basis of these CNO cycles, as there are more number of gamma rays produced as compared to neutrinos and all? Okay, anyone from the person who lectured today, can you answer it? So can you rephrase your question? Yes, the, how neutrinos are the most abundant particles in the universe. As we can see from this scenario, no cycles that there are more numbers of photons and all produced as compared to neutrinos, then on what basis we say that the neutrinos are most abundant particles? Uh, this is not the main reaction which is going on in the sun, right? This is just uh, another reaction which is going on. So this is not the only source of neutrinos and gamma rays. And also we have few detectors, especially for CNO cycles. <clears throat> so that they detect this, this is a theoretical stuff we have put on. Uh, I guess a, a experimental uh, theorist can easily answer uh, the detectors and the things used to uh, specially detect the CNO cycles. Thank you. Okay, adding to them, uh... Can you say, Attila, what is the uh, main uh, reactions that will happen in the universe? What is the most fundamental reaction that will happen? Also, like uh, what Attila said, uh, 
Atila, did you talk about photons in your like question? I didn't get it properly. Can you say it again? Like, because if you are yeah, talking I about, about photons, yeah. So I wanted to say like those are energy particles, and they get uh, what do I say? Um, I don't remember the exact word, but like you know, neutrinos don't react and interact, so they are mostly abundant because of that. Also, photons get absorbed and reabsorbed, and all those stuffs happens. That's also a reason, including that there are other many sources of neutrinos also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more thing that I read in that Wikipedia article is that is that these neutrinos escape with escape from the neutron reaction with the so you you are going to be able to you know trap those neutrinos somehow you know but you are able to trap these gamma rays somehow. So what I what I read was what it says that. Um, these neutrinos escape from the star, carrying away some energy. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, I have one question, guys. Uh, in all the neutrino cycle, I mean, in all the CNO cycle, was the energy output the same in all the CNO cycle? <laughs> Or can you tell which energy, which cycle had the most energy output? So how about someone share the screen and share the Wikipedia page? We can calculate the energy cycle, energy output in each cycle. Yes, I got it. Yeah, you just share the uh, screen. Okay, CNO one. If you can see, uh, what will be the total energy output? So, it will be like approximately. Have they mentioned it? Um, I don't think they mentioned it. Uh, it will yeah, be twenty-seven they... MeV. I guess. Yeah, about like twenty-six point two or something. Yeah, so the, the total energy in one cycle is 26.7. 6.7, yeah. Okay. So what's in the second neutrino cycle? I mean, CNO cycle. Have they mentioned it? Uh, no, they haven't. Okay. I think we can calculate, mm -hmm. right? Actually, it is a modification from the first one. So we just have to uh, remove the last two reactions and just put these uh, numbers although if we add uh, we just uh, get it around <clears throat> around 26.7 or something like that just some point difference okay and cno3 hmm. so i don't think there are much difference in different cno cycles right all cold CNO has same energy output. Yeah, almost okay. the same energy output. They just differ in a bit, like point. Okay, what about in how on hot cycle, in hot CNO cycle, let's say? Okay. Okay, in all these cycles, why should the CNO cycles vary like this? If the energy output is the same, why should it vary? Um, because it has, like, we can differentiate a nova and a star through its glow, dust, and the other stuff, right? So the other energy, like, uh, it has a, a extra luminosity and a temperature, so it differs. Okay, it's the temperature which determines the cycle, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A temperature and also the pressure. Yeah. So yeah, and the elements uh, present in that actually temperature and the elements present if the oxygen like the abundance of the elements also determines the cycle. Yeah, okay. That is a pretty good answer. And more it depends on the elements also. So then do you think uh, there has to be some other reactions? already happened other than proton-proton or CNO cycle. 
so that these catalyst elements are formed initially. So yeah, Sagar, it's mentioned over here. Uh, it was mentioned here, Sagar. Uh, yes, it, it mentioned over here. Uh, the positrons will almost instantly annihilate the electrons, releasing energy. The neutrinos escape, carrying some energy. One nucleus goes on, goes on to become carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, isotope through a number of transformations in the SS loop. So, this is how you get those three elements. Okay, then. So, now this CR cycles mainly um, interact or occur to form uh, helium. In we using hydrogen, right? Like hydrogen is converted to helium in all the cycles. So what reactions will undergo so that carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen are in there are the end are the end products? They're not usually the cycle, rather carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, they have to be the end products. Like what are those reactions? Can we read about that now? Wait, I, I didn't understand. In CNO cycles, we have carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen as the catalysts. They are not yeah. the end products. Rather, hydrogen is converted to helium. Okay. Yeah. But what nuclear reactions are present in stars such that um, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, these elements are formed? Yeah, he is asking the how carbon, elements. nitrogen, and oxygen was formed first. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. I got it. And uh, I got a PDF uh, which gives the energy, like uh, overall energy production um, in the CNO cycles. I'll share the link for that in the chat section where. Yeah. 